All of our models before, our independent variables had been continuous variables or categorical, which we use dummy variables. And basically, they've been purely additive, meaning each term is just added to the model. However, what if we believe that sales from our previous model is actually dependent on the city that it's in? Sales are different in each city, and we want to account for those differences. So another example might be if we believe there's an effect for gender on income, as well as an effect for location in U.S., but we further believe that the values are different based on the combination of location and gender. So we call this effect an interaction effect. And what we're doing is we're multiplying the two values together to obtain a new term and establish a new coefficient. So as we see in the model here, we have our b0 plus b1x1 plus b2x2. And then we're adding another term, which is x1 times x2. And we're going to establish another coefficient, b3, from it. So from our previous model, we said we believe that there is an interaction between sales and complaints. It could be any two variables, for that matter. The table on the right adds a third independent variable, where we simply multiply x1 by x2. And so we end up with an equation where we have y hat equals b0, or beta 0, plus beta 1 x1, plus beta 2 x2, plus beta 3 x1 times x2. We add this new column into our regression equation and conduct the analysis in the same way. And we would analyze the adjusted r squared, and we would analyze the individual coefficients. And as we see down below, we get a number of coefficients for the intercept, for the complaints, for the sales, and the x1, x2 variable. Our interpretation is exactly the same. For the interaction term, the coefficient indicates that we would multiply the product of the two variables by 0.0014. We should note again that in this particular model, the p-values are all greater than 0.05. Now we're going to discuss that a little bit later, but when the p-value is greater than 0.05, the term itself will not be significant in the model, and therefore we shouldn't include it in the model. So in this case, in this example, none of the p-values are less than 0.05, and so therefore none of the terms will actually be significant, and this is not necessarily a good model.